Hey guys, how you doing? It's XDSL. Hello! The the mic worked first time. I was expecting it not to... I, I wasn't sure if it was muted. So I was at the beginning ready to instantly abort and then it worked. And now, now I feel like I should have just started again. It's, it's, hello, every, <laughs> hello everyone! How are you? Um, I can't hear the response. I don't know why I ask how everyone is. But the thought is there. You know, if we could converse, I'd be interested to hear about you. Anyway, uh, we're not here to talk about you today. We're here to talk about Iconoclasts. Ah, oh, Iconoclast is an interesting game. Iconoclast is a game that... Okay, let me just read to you the uh, the blurb as it is on uh, on Steam. Join renegade mechanic Robin to uncover the secrets of a dying planet. Explore a big world filled with intricate puzzles, interesting characters, and menacing bosses in a beautiful platform adventure that tells the personal story about faith, purpose, and the challenge of helping people. See, that sounds like kind of like... A little bit weird, like a little bit off kilter. So I did some reading up, and it's it's it, the game was before I started playing. I was under the impression the game was uh, of a religious focused nature, like it's a world of heavy religion. I thought, oh, this is gonna be one of those preachy games where the developers got like a certain religious standpoint, and they're trying to make a point. I was like, oh, it does look beautiful. But I was like, oh, I don't be bothered with all that stuff. I'm like, it annoys me. I don't, I don't want a game to preach to me. So I didn't bother with it. And then uh, Anjun, who is a member of the Discord group, by the way, Discord group did in, below in the description, there's, a, there's an invite if you're interested in joining me there, um, who has impeccable taste, said uh, said that she was interested in this game. So I was like, okay, o okay, I need I need to, hmm. All right then, let's go. And uh, I, I, I picked up a, a code from the dev and I thought, let's, let's give it a go. Let's hope for the best because it is beautiful. And I am so glad I did. I'm so glad I didn't let the word faith in the blurb and then the talk about religious stuff bother me because this game is far from preachy. What this game is, is a very personal story. I feel like the developer had a personal story that's somewhere in this. And much like the only time I felt like this before was when I was playing Owlboy, when I felt like like the story, the game, it was like a, a personal rite of passage the developer was going through. And that's really how I feel about Iconoclast, like, four hours in. Um, I really feel like it, it, it was something the developer really wanted to do and wanted to tell. And it just feels so interesting and just so, yeah, so personal is the only way I can put it. I know that's a hipster thing to say, but that's genuinely how I feel about it. And uh, all in all, so far, I have nothing but compliments. So let's do the facts, shall we? It was released on the 23rd of January um, 2018. Its price is £17.49. As I said, my code was provided to me by the developer. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, but Linux is all we care about. And uh, it was released on day one on Linux, which is really nice to see. There seem to be no caveats or oddities about the port, um, or the Linux version, I should say. I just loaded it up. It worked beautifully. No hump, hoop jumping whatsoever. It requires a dual-core CPU, 2 gigahertz, 1 megabyte of RAM. 1 megabyte of RAM. Probably should say gigabyte, I'm assuming. But either way, it's let, let's hope it's 1 megabyte. You, you don't need a desktop environment. Just boot straight into the game, you're fine. Um, graphics, 512 megabyte video memory and 500 megabyte of space. What does it say about, about memory? One gigabyte of RAM. There you go, on Windows. One gigabyte and one megabyte. So I don't know what that's about. So, okay. Uh, games that are like it is Cat Maze, Shantae Pirate's Curse and Momodora. I don't even know what that is. Is that even on Linux? I don't think either of these games are on Linux. That's not on Linux. Why I haven't heard of it. So don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I would say games like it are very much our boy. Um, and... I'm trying to think of what else is like. No, you know what? Our boy's the only game that strikes me as being particularly like this game. So let's uh, stop messing about, shall we? And let's have a look at the game. Woo, there we go. Um, now I'm playing it on, at the moment, a Steam controller. No, I'm not. This is next to a controller. I just picked up the wrong controller and turned it on. Um, it's fine. I played it on stream on Steam controller. Had no problems. It was lovely. Um, and uh, I've also played it on Xbox controller. And it's also been fine. So much so I didn't even notice which controller I had in the hand, which is pretty bad actually <laughs> pretty bad i suppose actually um what i've done here is i've started a new game just to show you some of the things that happens because even though the plot's like light but like there's a lot going on so even though it's not hard to follow there's a lot going on um which is what a plot should be um and the dialogue chunks are small but interesting so i thought what i'd do here is i've just um i've just loaded the game with a new game so not to give you any spoilers because that seems it seems pointless to give you spoilers when you know it's, it's fine so you got you got x to shoot a to jump um and at some point later on you get the ability to use the triggers to operate 
a, uh, a spanner thing, which we'll probably, we might get to in the video, I don't know. But that's the main features of the game. You've got your standard platforming, uh, you've got your stun gun thing, and you've also got these buttons, which you can you can use a spanner to interact with. You can use them to swing on to get to higher ledges, like that one there, you use swing on to get to higher ledge. But uh, also, they can use to turn things on and off, so... Um, well, you can probably see one here actually. Uh, you would use the spanner here to open the, the door would open then, um, and that's 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 the uh, that's the uh, the point there of the spanner to uh, to interact with things, which is nice. I assume the further you get on, you might pick up more uh, tools because there's talk of a screwdriver and there's some different types of points. So maybe spanner gets modified. I'm not far enough in the game to know yet, but uh, I can tell you now, I will be because it is lovely. Um, there is a certain level of auto aim on the uh, on the controller. Uh, it'll aim up or down for you, uh, which is which is, which is nice to be honest. I mean, I'm not I'm not objecting to that sort of thing. This sort of game, it's not the sort of game where you're going to play it because you want to be a dead eye shot. It you know, it's nice. It does a certain amount of auto aiming for you. Oh crap! Yeah, I mean, can we also get through that one there? Yeah, there we go. Got them all without even without even breaking a sweat. And there's these crates here. Look, you open the crates by pushing down on the uh, on the control pad. Improvium, which is obviously a real thing and not made up for the game. I do say though, the controls are really tight because I've been flipping like like just from from analog stick to D-pad, and it's just like I don't know if I'm not pushing any like when I start pushing buttons, I adjust my hand and I just it feels great on both. Um, it, like there's no like it feels great. When well, the first time I played it, I had a little bit of a go on the keyboard. Man, the keyboard controls less than ideal. It does feel like it's been balanced for a pad, and it's such a great. Such a great balance. Uh, and then we hold the button down X and shoot. Yay! Um, again, it's done a really good job of showing you mechanics in a very a very light way. You know, it's, it just it takes you a little section and you just like, yeah, just like, use the mechanics here. You'll be fine. You can duck down there and go here. I'm thinking there's a box there. Yeah, there's a box there. We get some more metallium. That's a secret. I think that's a secret. I'm not sure you're supposed to spot that first time around, but I'm, I'm happy to spot it. Uh, and then you can't get in here because you don't have a key. You get keys sometimes through fighting animals and sometimes through just... Sometimes you just find them in the wilderness. Um, there's usually one around if... You know, there you go, let's get down. There's usually one around if you see something locked. There's usually one within a screen or so. Um, all in all, I really like it. The plot is about religion in the way that the town... The, the, the world is controlled... Um, or this the area of the world is controlled by a religious leader called Mother, I think. Um, and, and Mother... Uh, it gets disappointed and, and, and you have to do things as you're told so they have a class system and the class system means that you're picked a job by the government so in this particular case this girl's father was an engineer which is why she's good with a spanner she picked up some things and she just wants to use her spanner to help people out because obviously people can't afford in this world i'm playing really bad on talking people can't afford in this world to have their houses repaired and stuff so she's using her spanner to do our jobs and that is considered to be a sin by the game that is that is a sin um and that's getting her in a lot of trouble. So instead of just like, you know, like just stopping to do it like she's told. She's got dreams and hopes and wants to help people. So she's uh, she's decided to uh, to just ignore the government and carry on. And that's where the adventure ensues. She becomes wanted. And there's, there's these weird like FBI style agents um, who are like massive assholes. But in the most adorable way possible. Like even though they're obvious dicks and they're going out of their way to be dicks. It's like, are oh, you just so entertaining though? It's like you're real proper characters, not just faceless generic bad guys, which I really like. That's the thing about this game that makes it stand out, actually. Um, all the characters, apart from the main protagonist, all the characters are really likeable and interesting and have, like, personality. Whereas the uh, the character you're playing is probably the least interesting one, but she's made more interesting through the world. Because she doesn't actually speak, but the occasional nod and stuff. She doesn't actually speak. Um, so it's nice, to, you know, it's nice to have a world that's so interesting without them going out of the way to make that character particularly... Uh, particularly interesting. Fucking come on, let's kill this. Let's kill this fucking thing. There we go. It's getting me angry now. It's like, it's like I do a lot better when I'm not talking. There you go. That was that was really annoying. That seemed to go on too long. I kept missing it. My, I mean, there's auto aim. I kept missing it. That's what you get for talking, I suppose. But yay! And breaky, breaky. No. Okay. A little eyeball. See. Nice animation. Interesting. Not the animation and the uh, the pixel art. He's nowhere near the level of our boy. But it's, but our boy up the like skewed the the, the grading if you like. Um, this is a beautiful game that I think looks lovely, and the use of color is exceptional. And if you look at the backgrounds, there, the layered background and stuff, some really nice delicate touches, which a lot of people probably won't even notice as they play through. That telling you how to crawl there, which which it's funny because it tells you how to crawl there that you have to like crouch and then crawl. But if you just walk straight towards it, it auto crouches. So I wonder if that's something that was was added after the fact. 
Yay. And then up there. And then shoot that thing. And then up there. And holding off ledges is a big deal. Also, when you get to this point, you can't blow up with this weapon. Not possible. But you do get other weapons later, which we'll be able to come back and uh, and get that stuff sorted. There we go. And this one says, uh, climbing on ledges. You can go boom, boom, boom. We've been here earlier, actually. But we're going to go this way. And it's just a bit quicker. Yay. There we go. Boom. And when I go in this room, that is where the dialogue happens. Um, because the agents are there from one concern who want to tell me off for using my spanner and tell me to stay there while they sort something else out but i don't want to sort of give you spoilers and stuff i don't think there's any relevance there i would hope if this is a game that you're interested in i've shown you enough of it to make you go hey that looks good that looks that looks interesting that does um i'll just go in this room get the first couple of lines dialogue out of the way so you can see some characters there you go yeah uh say she's there there you go that's uh Agent Black, and this is my partner, Agent White. There you go. I'll leave you. I'll leave it there, and then you can uh, you can imagine what Black and White are saying. It's nothing good, though. It's nothing good, and there's a spanner hidden underground. They don't find that. I'll tell you now. Um, that sounds like a spoiler. It's literally 30 seconds time in the game. <laughs> That's just it. Um, yeah, interesting characters, great animation, really tight controls. Um, if I had to criticize at all, it'd be that some of the boss fights I've encountered, the um, the method by which you you you, you win. He's not telegraphed hugely well. Um, that's probably my only criticism. There's a little bit more working out than there should be to uh, to get certain, to, sort of to beat certain, certain bosses. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I worked it out so far all on my own without having to go through the internet search. But uh, they're just not telegraphed quite as well as they are in things like Owlboy, where it's obvious what you have to do from the start. But uh, that does add a little bit of feel to the game, you know, like working out what it is. But yeah, all in all, great game. I really like it. So thank you for watching. I've been XDSL. You can get a link to the game in the description below. And don't forget, if you're not already, check me out on Discord, because we have a Discord group, and everyone talks a lot and has a great old time, um, which, is, which is fun. And also, if you're also inclined, you can support me on Patreon. And I promise to use your Patreon money in unconstructive ways such as buying pizza or more video games for the channel thank you for watching i've been hex bye not gonna lie i had a bit of a panic moment there where i uh i realized i didn't have my hand over the end button and i was like what do i do and i might have made a weird expression i'm gonna let it roll it's fine